Dealing with Grief in Islam Part 2 Therefore, God puts people to the test, to differentiate between the true from the false. Indeed, how can the worth of an object be ascertained unless it is put to the test? An automobile maker will test its cars to see how fast they can go and to see what type of crash they can withstand. Likewise, God puts his creations to the test, to see how faithful they will be, and to see if they will remain so when he causes them to crash. Will they fold up like a beat-up lemon? Or will they be like the high-end car that can withstand much? God says. I will test you, O believers. With striving in Allah's path and fighting and killing the enemy until I know, in a manner that makes it apparent to the servants, those of you who strive in Allah's path. And those of you who are steadfast in fighting the enemy. I will test you so that I know those of you who are sincere and those who are false. Quran 4731. Adversity and afflictions are actually a heavenly mercy, because they give the believers a chance to earn good deeds, by being patient and loyal to God. By passing the test that God puts them through, these believers open up the way for entrance into paradise, i.e. heaven. God says. Do you believers think that you will enter paradise whilst you have not faced a trial like the people of the past? They were afflicted with severe sickness and poverty and were shaken by frightening events to the extent that they wanted the help of Allah to come as quick as possible. And the messenger and the believers with him began saying, When is the help of Allah coming? The help of Allah is close to those that have faith and trust in him. Quran 2-214 and so people are tested with various trials and afflictions, poverty, hunger, fear, etc. are all various forms of God's test. Even the loss of loved ones is one such trial. When the ungrateful one loses a loved one, he becomes bitter against God, challenging God as to why he caused his loved one to die. But the grateful believer will remain patient and submit his will totally to God, and in this way, God differentiates the true from the false. God says, Allah will test people with different types of hardships, some with fear of those who are against them, hunger because of lack of food, lack of money because of losing it or difficulty gaining it. Loss of lives due to death from diseases and tragedies that kill people, or being martyred for the sake of Allah, and a lack of resources from the earth. Give good news, O Prophet, to those who are patient in the face of these hardships, of what will make them happy in this world and in the afterlife. The patient are those who, when they are struck by one of these hardships, say, in acceptance, that all power belongs to Allah, He deals with us as He wills. And we will return to Him on the Day of Judgment, and it is He who created us and showers us with many blessings, so, to Him is our return and our end. Those who possess these virtues are praised by Allah in the highest gathering of angels, and mercy descends on them. They are the ones guided to the path of truth. Quran 2-155-157 It is not necessary that calamity is the only way God tests us. God's testing may also be in the form of blessings, wealth, health, children, family, and the like. What the people do with such blessings is indeed a great test. Many celebrities and rich people are given great wealth, fame, and material goods, but they are not grateful to God for that, and instead live their lives in sin and wickedness. God says, Be aware O believers that your wealth and children are a test for you, and your conduct with them may prevent you from performing good actions for your afterlife, or lead to betraying your trusts. Know that with Allah is a great reward, so be careful not to lose this reward because of becoming engrossed with them, and you cheating the people because of them. Quran 8:28. Therefore, we see that God tests the people through both adversity as well as blessing, but regardless of the type of test, the believers are those who remain grateful to God. The Quran declares. You will certainly be tested, all believers, in your wealth, in relation to fulfilling your duties concerning it, and with the misfortunes sent down with it and in yourselves with regards to how you conduct yourselves with the orders and prohibitions of the sacred law. Also, you will certainly hear many things from those who were given the scripture before you, and from those who worship others with Allah, that are hurtful to you, criticizing you in your sacred way of life. But if you are patient with the misfortunes and trials you are given, and are mindful of Allah, doing what He instructs and staying away from what He has prohibited, then that will lead to the good consequences and it is a matter of believers that requires firm resolve. Quran 3-186 in conclusion, when calamity befalls a believer, he should know that in it is much good, even if it is not apparent at first. Through affliction are sins expiated and souls purified, through trials are the steadfast tried by God, and only the resolute will be successful. It is upon these that God will bestow goodness in due time, either in this life or the life after death. God says. Only those who are patient upon harm caused to them and difficulties they face from the people, are given the ability to display this praiseworthy character. Only those who are extremely fortunate are granted the ability to do it, because of the abundant goodness and immense benefit there is in it. Quran 41:35. When calamity strikes us, we should take pride in the fact that we are similar to the righteous servants of God, of whom were the prophets, all of them were put through trials and tests. Prophet Abraham and his son, may God praise them both, were both tested in a most severe way. God commanded Prophet Abraham to sacrifice his son, Ismail.
This command no doubt would have been very difficult for Prophet Abraham, and he no doubt would have been very saddened by the thought of losing his loved one. But Prophet Abraham patiently persevered and obeyed God. Not only this, but even Ismail, remained steadfast and obedient and offered himself to be sacrificed. This test that God put Prophet Abraham through was to test his determination. If Prophet Abraham or his son had been weak in faith, they would have both failed this severe test God rewarded them with a great reward on account of their strong faith and obedience to him. Right before Prophet Abraham struck his son, a ram appeared and God told him to sacrifice it instead. As a reward, God promised to establish them as leaders on earth. God says of Prophet Abraham and his son. So when they submitted to Allah and obeyed him, Abraham laid his son down on his forehead, to carry out the order given to him to slaughter his son. I called out to Abraham while he was about to carry out the order of Allah to slaughter his son, saying, O Abraham! You have fulfilled the dream you saw in your sleep by resolving to slaughter your son. Just as I rewarded you by freeing you of this great trial, I also reward those who do good by saving them from trials and difficulties. Indeed, this was a clear test which Abraham passed. Quran 37-103-106 The Quran says. The Quran tells us that Allah tested Abraham, peace be upon him, by instructing him to fulfill commandments and obligations. Abraham obeyed, fulfilling the orders completely. Allah told his prophet Abraham that he would make his manners and behavior an example for people to follow. Abraham asked Allah to make also his descendants leaders who people would be guided by. Allah replied by saying that his promise to him of sacred leadership would not extend to the wrongdoers among his descendants. Quran 2-124 No doubt when Prophet Abraham was instructed to sacrifice his son, he might have been reluctant in that regard, but he did it out of obedience to God Almighty. This goes to say that even if one may dislike something there may be good in it. God says, Fighting in Allah's path, jihad, has been chosen for believers even though Fighting in Allah's path, jihad, has been chosen for believers even though it is something that is naturally disliked, because it means risking one's life and wealth. However, you may dislike something when, it is good and beneficial. An example of this is striving in Allah's path, which means, in addition to the great reward, the defeat of the enemy and promotion of Allah's word. On the other hand, you may like something whilst it is bad and harmful to you, such as holding back from fighting, this will result in you being defeated and the enemies gaining authority over you. Allah knows full well what is good and what is not, whereas you do not. Therefore, follow his instruction which is better for you. Quran 2-216 Another example that comes to mind is that of Prophet Joseph, may the mercy and blessings of God be upon him. The Quran mentions many details of the trials and tribulations he faced in his life. His father loved him a great deal, which made his brothers very jealous of him. They conspired against him, and finally dumped him in a deep well. A company of travelers passed by the well, and one of them let down his bucket. He said, Good news! Here is a boy! And they took him as merchandise. With this, Prophet Joseph was sent to the far-off land of Egypt as a slave. An Egyptian governor bought him, and Prophet Joseph dutifully toiled away. As he was in the service of the governor, the test intensified, the governor's wife, who was very beautiful, tried to seduce Joseph. This was a great trial for Prophet Joseph, and he resisted her advances with steadfast perseverance. One day, the governor's wife ran after Prophet Joseph, so to seduce him by force, and she tore his shirt, whereupon her husband entered the room. She accused Prophet Joseph of rape but Joseph denied it, and when the governor saw his shirt torn from the back, he asked his wife to repent to God Almighty. She schemed and came up with a plot to have Prophet Joseph, she gave him one of two choices, to either approach her or to be thrown in prison. He chose the second and was put in prison for a period of time. When we are struck with calamities, we should think of all the trials Prophet Joseph went through, years of slavery and imprisonment. Yet, through it all, Prophet Joseph remained steadfast to God. He never resented the calamities that had befallen him, but instead used the time to invoke his Lord. It was then, finally, after many years, that God rewarded Prophet Joseph for his steadfastness. It was in that same jail cell that he met a man who had a dream, God gave Prophet Joseph the gift of being able to interpret dreams. And so Prophet Joseph interpreted his cellmate's dream, telling him that he, the cellmate, would go free and work for the king. Indeed, the prophecy came true and the man did go free to work for the king. One day, the king had a dream. The story is narrated in the Quran. One day the king said that he had seen a dream in which seven fat cows were being eaten by seven thin ones, and seven green ears of corn and seven dry ears of corn. He asked the notables and nobles to tell him the interpretation of his dream, if they knew how to interpret dreams. Quran 1243 Prophet Joseph's sex cellmate, who was now in the service of the Egyptian king, immediately remembered Joseph. He informed the king about Prophet Joseph, and so Joseph was asked to interpret the dream, which he did. Prophet Joseph told the king that there would be seven years of good harvest, after which would follow seven years of drought and famine. 
he advised the king to store up food during the seven years of prosperity, which could be used during the times of drought and famine. The king was so pleased by Prophet Joseph that he not only set him free but appointed him to a very high position in the government. And so God established a great deal of good through adversity. Had Prophet Joseph never been abandoned in the well by his brothers, nor sold into slavery, nor imprisoned wrongfully, he would never have been found by the king and appointed to a position of such great authority. Indeed, Prophet Joseph had to go through all the tribulation in order to attain that rank. Therefore, when we go through difficult times in life, we should be positive. It may be that God is propelling us to a greater good which may be unknown to us at that moment. Prophet Solomon was also tested, although in a different way. He was given immense wealth and power, history attests to the fact that wealth and power corrupts. Yet, Prophet Solomon was one of the few kings who remained pious and God-fearing. The Quran says, And I tested Solomon and put on his chair part of a child. And that was when he swore by Allah that he will sleep with all of his wives and each one of them will bring forth a horseman to strive in Allah's way. But he did not say in this oath of his, if Allah wills. So he slept with all of them, but none of them gave birth except one who gave birth to part of a child. Then Solomon repented to his Lord. Quran 38-34 Indeed, all of God's prophets were tested, this shows that God bestows trials upon his righteous servants, and we should feel proud to be in their company. We should also emulate their behavior, which was to remain steadfast in times of tribulation. All of what has been stated in this article is extremely interesting, but it all boils down to the following question, how should we deal with grief when a calamity strikes? Every person on earth will face some grief in his life, and some more than others. People deal with grief in different ways, but how should a believer deal with it? The first thing that a believer should realize is that the calamity is from God. The Quran declares, At any time and place, death will surely come to you when reach your prescribed life term, even if you are in guarded palaces far from battle. And when these hypocrites receive something pleasing, such as a child or wealth, they say, this is from Allah. Yet when they face some difficulty with respect to their children or wealth, they attribute a bad sign and misfortune to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and they say, this evil is because of you. Say, O Messenger, in response to these people, everything, good or bad, occurs by Allah's decree and decision. What is the matter with these people, who say such things, that they can hardly understand anything you tell them? Quran 478 once we realize that it is from God, we should realize that God is the most loving, Al-Wadud, and the most kind, Al-Bar. Therefore, there is some good in whatever God has decreed for us, even if we do not immediately see what it is. God Almighty says. Perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you, and perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows, while you know not. Quran 2-216 Imam Hassan al-Basri, a great scholar of Islam, said. Do not resent the calamities that come and the disasters that occur, perhaps in something that you dislike will be your salvation, and perhaps in something that you prefer will be your doom. For example, if a man is laid off, perhaps it will be a means to securing an even better job, which he might not have opted for had he not been fired in the first place. One of the benefits of calamity that we know about for sure is the fact that a person's sins are forgiven by the will of God. Musab b. Sibi. Malik narrated that his father said. O Messenger of Allah, who are the most nested and tried people in this world? He answered, the prophets, and then who were similar to them, i.e. the God-fearing and pious. A man would be tested and tried according to his piety and faith. If the individual has strong faith, he would be tested and tried in a severer manner. Similarly, if the man's faith is weak, he would be tested accordingly. A person would be struck by calamities until he is be sin free Ibn Hibn No. 2901 Fatal Ibn Sal said, There is a blessing in calamity that the wise man should not ignore, for it. Calamity, erases sins, gives one the opportunity to attain the reward for patience, dispels negligence, reminds one of blessings at the time of health, calls one to repent, and encourages one to give charity. The believer should turn to God when a calamity strikes. In this way, the calamity reminds the believer that his only purpose in life, the reason for his creation, is to worship God alone. This is in fact the meaning of our existence and the purpose of our life. God says in the Quran. I created the jinn and humankind only to worship me. Quran 51 56. Oftentimes, when life is good and man is living in prosperity, he forgets to worship his Lord. It is only when calamity strikes that he remembers to invoke God. So, in this way, a calamity serves as a reminder to fulfill the purpose for which we were created. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Timiyah said. A calamity that makes you turn to God is better for you than a blessing which makes you forget the remembrance of God. Imam as Sufyan said. What a person dislikes may be better for him than what he likes, because what he dislikes causes him to call upon God, whereas what he likes may make him heedless, of worship. 
Therefore, whenever calamity strikes, we should show our gratitude to God by saying all praise is due to God, Alhamdulillah. Prophet Muhammad, may the mercy and blessings of God be upon him, commented. How wonderful is the affair of the believer, for his affairs are all good, and this applies to no one but the believer. If something good happens to him, he is thankful for it and that is good for him. If something bad happens to him, he bears it with patience and that is good for him. Sahih Muslim When Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was wrongfully imprisoned, he regarded it as a blessing that his enemies had enabled for him. Sheikh al-Islam used that time to increase his worship of God. He said, What can my enemies do to me? My imprisonment is a religious retreat, an opportunity to worship God, my being killed as martyrdom, and my being expelled from my city as a journey. Prophet Muhammad said, There is no Muslim who is stricken with a calamity and, then, says what God has enjoined, to say, Verily, to God we belong and unto Him is our return. O God, reward me for my affliction and compensate me with something better but God will compensate him with something better. Sahih Muslim We should remember that God tests those whom He loves most. The Prophet said, The greatest reward comes with the greatest trial. When God loves a people, He tests them. Whoever accepts this, wins his pleasure. al Paramahi. And the Prophet said further, The path to paradise is surrounded with difficulties. Calamity and grief is a way of having our sins forgiven in this life, so that we won't have to face the punishment for these sins in the next life. Trials will continue to befall the believing man and woman, with regard to themselves, their children, and their wealth, until they meet God with no sin on them. al Paramahi. God does not send calamity down upon us in order to destroy us, nor to shatter our will, nor to finish us off, but rather as a means of checking on us, to test our patience and faith. If it were not for trials and tribulations, a person would develop arrogance, heedlessness, and hard-heartedness, which would lead him to the pits of hell. So it is indeed a mercy of God that He sends down upon us this remedy to cure us of these diseases of the heart, and to eliminate all evil elements in our personality that might lead to our doom. When some calamity strikes us in this life, we should remember that God will recompense us, but we must show patience. The ultimate recompense will not even be in this life, but in the next one, and in this, we should take comfort. Abu Sufyan lost his eye in battle whilst defending the Muslims, he asked the Prophet to pray to God that he, Abu Sufyan, get his eyesight back. The Prophet asked him if he would rather have his eye in this life or the next, and Abu Sufyan responded that he would rather have the recompense in the next life. Abu Sufyan would in fact go on to lose his other eye as well. God says, Allah gives from His mercy to whomever of His servants He wills in this world, and does not allow the reward of those who do good to be lost, giving it to them in full. And nothing less doubt the reward of Allah, which He has prepared in the afterlife, is certainly better than the reward of this life for those who have faith in Allah and who are mindful of Him. Following what He has ordered and staying away from what He has prohibited. Quran 1256-57 a believer must never despair in God's mercy, he should not think that God will not get him out of this rut. In fact, the name of Satan in Arabic, Iblis, comes from the root word Ablasa, which means to despair. A certain calamity hit Satan, he was demoted when Prophet Adam was created. Instead of thinking that this was something good from God, Satan despaired of God's mercy, and thereupon began his hedonistic lifestyle. Likewise, when calamity strikes some people, they resort to booze and other sinful devices to ebb their pain. But the believers do not fall into despair but rather they turn to God in worship. God reassures His creation. Allah takes an oath on the beginning of the day. And He takes an oath on the night when it darkens and people cease to move in it. O Messenger! Your Lord has not left you, nor has He begun to hate you, as the idolaters claimed when there was a break in the revelation. Indeed, the abode of the afterlife is better for you than the worldly one, because of the everlasting bounties that it has. Very soon He will grant you an abundant reward, and your nation also, until you become content with what He has granted you and your nation. Quran 93 to 1 to 5